kind of an organic thing. You just know when it's time to march. And clearly, it's time to march right now because there is a war on choice. Walk with us. March with us. I'm living in limbo land. Dancing as fast as I can. Walk my march. Don't know if I'm coming or going or rocking or rolling. I'm dancing as fast as I can. When the president last year became our nation's first ever president to criminalize abortion and threaten doctors with up to two years in prison for providing women medical care that they need, it inspired outrage and it sort of was a wake-up call to pro-choice Americans who just didn't believe, didn't believe that this president would do this kind of thing. Thank you to all of you who have been here organizing, making this Action Center uh, come to life. And today is our official opening, and it's going to be the hub of everything we do over the next couple of months. We intend to have lots of activity here, phone calls, poster deliveries. NARAL Pro-Choice America knows what's at stake. Uh, part of the reason to do this march is to educate and mobilize pro-choice Americans so that they understand how close we are to losing this fundamental liberty. And we have got a job to do to inform pro-choice Americans. And the march is one of the ways to do that. And no elected official from President Bush right down to city council people across this country are going to be able to ignore the powerful voice that we're going to have on April 25th, and you're going to be a very vital part of that. So I thank you very much. I'm here with Kate Michaelman. She's president of NAWAL Pro-Choice America. You are just opening up a center here today, and you are planning to march on April 25th. What exactly is going to happen? The April 25th is a Sunday. We will begin to gather on the mall in Washington uh, at 10 a.m. We will step off the march to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol at 12. There will be a whole host of speakers. It's going to be a phenomenal turnout. We plan it to be historic in numbers. There will be generations of families marching together, men, women, grandmothers, grandfathers. One of, one of America's greatest traditions, people organizing together to express their views. We've been on a journey for freedom for American women, and this march is, is another step along that long journey. Across time, across the world, women facing unwanted pregnancies have aborted, whether it has been through self-abortion, whether it has been through illegal abortions, or whether they have the means and they can go somewhere else to get a safe and legal abortion. We know that. It is a fact. So. If you get rid of a woman's right to choose a safe and legal abortion, you will have women die. The March Mobilization Parties are happening all over the country today. They've been happening all over the country for about the last four or five months. And they're really trying to just generate excitement about the march, let people know what's going on, details. There's going to be people there ranging from all ages. It's just going to be a really, an event that you all are going to want to be at. It's going to be something we're all going to remember for the rest of our lives. Because for a lot of us, this is going to be the first movement that we've actually been involved in and had, and had a strong tie to. We need you guys to all go out and find other people who are committed so that we can make this really the most influential, um, the most influential pro-choice march that this country has ever seen. Here at NARAL Pro-Choice America, we believe in giving women options and expanding women's rights. We work for um, comprehensive sex ed so that you know young men and women have the tools to say no 
but if they decide to be sexually active to protect themselves and to prevent unwanted pregnancy. We work for um, increased education about emergency contraception, which if taken within a number of days after intercourse, can reduce a woman's chance of becoming pregnant by 80%. There are nearly three million unintended pregnancies in the United States every year. Half of those end in abortion. If EC can have that large of an impact, why on earth is the anti-choice movement working against it? Why not work for common sense policies that reduce the need for abortion rather than spending your energies on restricting a woman's right to choose? And if you guys all sign up on that yellow sheet of paper, um, it means you're signed up for the march and we will get you all the information you possibly could want about becoming a volunteer and going to the Action Center. On Wednesday nights they have, they do phone banking, they go door to door, they talk to people, they stand at Metro Stops and Flyer, they sign people up. It's a good way for me to get other guys involved. It's a guys issue too. It's about birth control, it's about things that guys kind of care about too. Um, I'm sure all of you have mothers and sisters and girlfriends and friends that are proud and partners, anything that this issue is going to affect them. They can get a cool t-shirt and meet women. Yeah, or you could just tell them that it's a good place to meet girls. Yeah. <laughs> lots of girls. I'm serious. Joe and I'm a volunteer with NARAL Pro-Choice America. We have you on our list that you have expressed interest in the March Women's Lives on April 25th. Well, there are only 18 days left before the march, and we need a lot of volunteers. Our volunteer database started out with 10 people, and now we're up to over 300 people. So we have a lot of phone banking here. We're trying to mobilize our base. Right now, we're asking them if they can come volunteer because we have 25,000 signs being delivered starting Wednesday. So we need help putting those together. I'm marching because I believe it's a grave attack on civil liberties when a bunch of politicos try to tell any woman what she can and cannot do with her body. I do have confidence that if there is an attempt, you know, by the administration, be it Republican or Democrat, to, to outlaw abortion rights, that you know, people will pour into the streets. I'm if I don't have a heart attack on the day of the march, I'm going to be surprised because right? I have like so much energy and like excitement that's like already coming. Like even you know getting so close and seeing all these people here and you know doing march related stuff and you know I just uh, I can't imagine what my feelings are going to be at the march. I'm probably just going to be so excited that I'm going to be going haywire like the whole time. Okay, well that's great. Yeah. Okay, well, we appreciate it. And we'll definitely see you there, right? Okay, thanks. Bye. We all kind of are aware that there are a lot of things going on. You know, you turn the news on at night, and I personally yell at the TV a lot, or you're throwing the newspaper across the room. Uh, maybe this is just me, because there are a lot of things going on that are making a lot of people angry. And anger is a powerful emotion, and we really should be angry. And just in case you're not angry enough already, but then I'm going to direct your anger. Don't worry, this won't just be an unhappy party. Here are some things that should be making you angry if they're not already. Okay, someone's... <laughs> Sarah is ready to be angry. Some things that should be making you angry. Well, living here in the D.C. area, of course, we hear about some of the big ones. Um, president Bush, just last fall, was the first president to sign a federal bill criminalizing a wide range of abortion procedures. That makes me angry. Thank you. Yes. Most of what I've seen among young, amongst young people is a real concern and a real feeling that even though I've never lived without the right, you know, if the women, you know, 30, 40 years ago fought for it, then I can't let it be lost. It's not, I'm, it's not going to be lost on our watch. In addition to this kind of large public um, element that a lot of us are talking about, there are a lot of incredibly insidious things that are happening in the country as well. It's not just the things that are in the paper every day. This administration is also attacking access to the most basic information regarding sexual health in our classrooms. In schools all over this country, students are not being told about basic information about how to prevent unintended pregnancies or how to protect themselves from sexually transmitted diseases. You will notice that we did include safe sex information and kits throughout the party. We're trying to make up for what President Bush isn't giving people. It's an old fable about um, uh, during the Holocaust, you know, in Germany, and it's you know, first they came for the you know, first they came for the gypsies, and I wasn't a gypsy, so I didn't say anything. And then they came for the Jews, and I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't say anything. And then they came for the Catholics, and I wasn't a Catholic, so I didn't say anything. And then they came for the homosexuals, and I wasn't a homosexual, so I didn't say anything. It's this whole idea that like. 
well, if, you know, if it doesn't affect me directly at this moment, then I should do nothing. And, and I think the answer is, well, eventually it's going to affect you. In addition to that, there are cuts being made at the state level and at the federal level to basic funding for services for reproductive health. Things like contraception, things like prenatal care, things like pap smears and cancer screening. You know, very basic parts of reproductive and sexual health. We're so used to having access to adequate reproductive health care for our wives and our daughters and our sisters that we take it for granted. If men had to make the choice on reproductive rights, it wouldn't be a question. But because it's women, it's just sexist and we're, and we're having this debate and I think we need to get out of this argument. Women have the choice to make decisions on their bodies. So when we think about it, this really isn't, this is a march for, not only for women's lives, but this is a march for everyone's lives. This is a march for reproductive health, for sexual health, for the right to privacy. Because those are the things, all of the things that are being attacked, not only by this administration, but by state legislatures and elected officials all over this country. And that's why a lot of people are angry. I think even for those moderate people who don't necessarily call themselves pro-choice, just looking at what John Ashcroft is doing right now, um, trying to subpoena women's medical records to prove that the so-called partial birth abortion ban is legal. He is trying to get people's medical records. That is invading someone's privacy. But being angry isn't enough. It is actually time for us to do something after we throw that paper across the room and then we get embarrassed and we blush and we pick it back up. It's time for us to do something that is going to make a real difference and change the tide and really change the direction that this country is moving in. And that is what this march is about on April 25th. It is about a million people coming together and saying, stop. We have had enough. We are going to not only protect our right to choose, we are going to protect our right to privacy and our most basic Freedom. You don't want to know that Roe v. Wade's ever turned and then sit there and think, I could have done something about it. What could I have done? You can do something right now. It's time to get up and get active. Of all times, now is the time. So tonight, let's think that we're celebrating for the rights that we have. Um, and let's also think then about after we wake up tomorrow, sleep it off a little, let's, uh, let's think about what we can do to really keep this movement moving forward and make a real change. So thank you for being here, and thank you in advance for all you're going to do to help make the march a success. And I think the public are finally coming out and saying, you know, we've had enough, and this is what we want, and this is what our country was founded on, and we are acting on it. So I'm very excited for this. book and her plan will make it so that you cannot run for dog catcher in this country unless you are pro-choice, pro-woman, pro-reproductive rights, and pro-Planned Parenthood. And the thing about Gloria is that she's just not talking from a philosophical background. She knows this world. Gloria was the mother of three by age 20. She says she's a graduate of an abstinence-only education. <laughs> History isn't something that just happens. It is something that we can make happen and not just let it happen to us. We're about to make that history right here in Washington with the uh, March for Women's Lives on April 25th. A march is such a wonderful thing. I mean, it's a wonderful phenomenon. It's so fabulous to be standing with hundreds of thousands of other people and sharing that feeling that you have mutual support and you share these values and beliefs. But the march is just a moment in time. And what really counts is keeping on marching.
there's a war on choice, many people don't yet realize that and don't realize how close we are to losing not just the right to manage our own fertility, but access to the very health care and education services that make those rights have meaning. 87% of the counties in the United States have no abortion provider. Family planning services, the very thing that prevents the need for abortion, those family planning programs are being defunded. It's not just an attack on abortion rights. It's an attack on your ability to get your birth control pills from your pharmacist, who may decide his religion tells him you shouldn't have a birth control pills, and so he just won't fill your prescription. Well, that's not right. Congress and state legislatures are trying to give a fertilized egg from the moment of conception more legal rights than the right of an adult woman. It's very frightening, very frightening. And to some extent, it's so outrageous that it's hard for people to even imagine it could possibly happen. But believe it, it's happening. It's happening today. It's happening right now here in the United States. If President Bush has an opportunity to appoint even one more anti-choice Supreme Court justice, the Supreme Court will immediately tip from being five to four in favor of the basic principles of reproductive freedom as in Roe v. Wade to being five to four against. And that could be the end of reproductive freedom as a whole generation of Americans has grown up knowing it. Because we won reproductive freedom from the top down the first time with a series of court cases, I think what we have to do this time is win it back from the bottom up. And I believe we're going to have to pass laws state by state by state by state and at the federal level that guarantee reproductive rights to every American. It's going to be the hardest thing we ever did. And it might take another generation, but it will be the most important. I thought of all these statistics that are out there, and it sort of seems like a lottery almost for young people. Um, and what we realized is that 10 in 10 young people have to deal with their sexual health. What we are really excited about with the 10 in 10 gathering space is that we have 2,000 to 3,000 young people who are already active in their communities coming together from across regions, from across different issue areas where they do their work and meeting one another and networking and building support amongst a young feminist generation. They'll go to the march tomorrow, and on Monday, they're back in their communities continuing doing the organizing. Latinas have very specific needs of wanting to come together, and so we thought it would be a perfect opportunity to combine both of these events and to really create a space where it's, you know, their space. They're coming to Washington, D.C., and now they, come, they get to come here and learn about different, different areas of the reproductive rights movement and women's rights. And, um, and to really march together tomorrow. We have to recognize how all of our different issues and the different experiences we have create strength when we bring them together. And, and I look forward to being a part of that. We certainly expect that this march will be historic in the diversity. I mean, we ourselves have brought buses of immigrant women from New York and from Boston, Chicago to come to this march and for many of them this is the first time that they're leaving their cities since they arrived to the United States and they never thought that they would actually march for reproductive justice. In terms of um, being present at the march itself, I think it's really important for us to be visible and to be a visible presence and to be known that, you know, we are the generation post row and we care about this just as much as everyone else and that there are other issues that we care about too and not to the exclusion. One, one issue is not necessarily more important than another. All of these issues are important to us. The whole host of reproductive rights and other social justice issues are really key to a, our lives. Many high school students we talked to and, and, and recent, you know, newer college age students, uh, they've lived in abstinence only in a time where there were these abstinence only programs in their high schools. I mean, so basically our opposition, the anti-choice, has put their propaganda and anti-choice agenda into our schools. So to me, I think it's a difficult time when it, to, to be raised in when we're dealing with issues of sexuality for young people. 
because of all the contradictions. I mean, sex is still being sold to young people um, in our media, yet they have no place to go to get the right information. And I teach in Holyoke, Massachusetts, and Holyoke is the poorest city in Massachusetts. Last year, we lost our funding for our health class. Um, regular teachers who are not health teachers or nurses are not allowed to talk about condoms or safe sex. Right now, we have three teens that are pregnant in eighth grade and two teens that are pregnant in seventh grade. So that's a pretty high pregnancy rate to not be allowed to talk about condoms. Through George Bush's um, abstinence-only programs that he funds, we're essentially telling young people that we don't trust them to make responsible decisions because we don't trust them with the information to make those decisions. Young women are connecting issues of feminism to other areas of their lives. They may live in a community near a toxic dump and they are taking feminism into the environmental justice movement and talking about this affects our reproductive health, this affects the health of my community, asthma rates, uh, you know, all sorts of different health-related issues that affect women and children in my community, and we need to address that. We each have individual experiences based on you know, our backgrounds, based on the time that we were born in, and the ability to talk across those boundaries is what makes it strong, and the ability to work together across issues, across movements, that's what's creating our strength, so we have a broad-based movement. It's not solely about one issue or one concern or one group of people, but it's all of us. It's all of us working together towards creating a better world for all of us. And we think that this is not just a woman's issue, it's a man's issue also because that's half of the world. If half the world is being oppressed, how is the rest of us not being oppressed? I have been a Republican almost all my life, but this is not the Republican I thought I was. I'm strongly pro-choice, and uh, that means get the government off your back. My daughter-in-law's here, I'm here, my mother-in-law's here, her, uh, my sister-in-law's here, so there's several generations, some friends and their children and grandchildren. This is probably one of the most important things I've ever done. I'm here with my grandmother, my mother-in-law, my aunt, three generations of us, and I have a 20-month-old son, and I just feel like this is really to pave the way for him and his generation. Yeah, I was there before before abortions were legal. And I never, ever want to see it go back like that again. I can tell you a story about once when I worked for a private doctor, this woman came into our office. She had asked our doctor to refer her for a termination. And of course, he would not do it because this was before 1973. About two weeks later, I picked up our newspaper and she had dropped dead of an aneurysm on uh, one of our city streets. She had been to an abortionist in a nearby town. And I have never, ever forgotten that. And I swore if I could ever help another woman, I would do it. I'm a Republican who doesn't vote for Republicans anymore because they don't vote for choice. You never know when your family might have a problem and you really shouldn't be choosing for other people. continued confidence in Roe v. Wade as a useful and just decision, not to be undermined, not to be amended, and not to be weakened. Tonight, let me say, on behalf of my personal foremothers, and my daughters, and my grandson, and my granddaughter, congratulations. You are in the right room, at the right time, for the right reasons. You know, on my way here, I got stopped by a cop who told me that there's entirely too many people in town for this march. <laughs> and he acted like that was bad news. <laughs>
my friends, it's time for everyone to understand the issue is diverse. It's not just abortion. It's about birth control, pap smears, sexually transmitted diseases, and teen pregnancy okay. prevention programs. Great. And the audience and the recipients and the people for whom this is important is diverse. It includes African Americans, Latinos, Asians, and our sisters who are Caucasian and who have been there for a long time. All of us together for the first time are holding hands in unison. We agree on this issue and we are going to turn back the far right wing loud voice that is wrong for this country and wrong for women, men, and families. And I hate that they have taken over the word pro-life because we at Planned Parenthood, those of us who love children and love families and want people to have healthy planned pregnancies, we're the ones who affirm life and affirm a life of dignity and care about what happens to you after you're a fetus. Well, I understand that your grandmother was Margaret Sanger. Um, what do you think she would say were she here today? Well, she wouldn't be surprised that uh, reproductive freedom is still such a contentious issue in this country. It took her 50 years to get a birth control legalized. And the only people on her side were the women who were desperate for birth control information. Reproductive freedom ha has always existed. Uh, as long as humans have been on the planet, the only difference has been whether it's been legal or illegal in various societies. And we found that throughout history, it's much better to have it be legal uh, to w have women be able to plan in space and time their children, because uh, that's better for women and men and families. And so that's why I, it's so important for men to be here marching alongside women and uh, raising their voices as well. of our mothers and promote the dreams of our daughters by committing ourselves to protecting women's lives by protecting women's choices. They want us to have these babies, but they don't want to pay for their care or their education or their medical. They just say have them and then, well, whatever you do after that, it doesn't matter because you know, we're morally superior and morally right. The Sierra Club knows that protecting the planet means more than simply cleaning the air and the water, increasing energy efficiency, and protecting wild places and nature. Protecting the planet means protecting and enhancing the, wide, the lives of women here in the, at home and around the world. Thank you for standing up and marching for women's lives. You know, 12 years ago, we had a march, and that march helped to galvanize people across our country. And we elected a pro-choice president. This year, we've got to do the very same thing. Remember the words of June Jordan. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Our shame.
It's very simple. We are pro-choice, and we will never go back. Keep your laws off my body! Can you hear me, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? Say it with me so they can hear us. Keep your laws off my body! Say it to Congress. Keep your As you all know, I'm a businessman and a philanthropist. I believe in conserving our natural resources. I adhere to the idea that government should be as small as possible and generally stay out of our lives. I am a champion of freedom and free markets, and I am pro-choice. I know we have some Republican friends here, and I thank you so much for your support. But please help bring some sanity back to your party. What happened to the get the government off your backs Republican Party? They say, when faced with a very difficult and personal decision of whether or not to continue with the pregnancy, they say it's not for us. We say we honor and support and fight for your right to never the suffragettes won the right to vote to be able to keep Roe versus Wade and judges who are fair. We are determined to stop this war on women. The young women and men of this nation cannot have policies that advocate abstinence only. And we cannot go back to a day of back alley abortions. Never again. I'm Kate Michaelman, and I am pro-choice America. And this is my granddaughter, Anastasia, and she is pro-choice America. Are you pro-choice America? Yes! If you believe that the right to choice is a basic human right that no politician must ever take away with the sweep of his pen. Walk with us, march with us, fight with us, and keep on fighting. The time is now to finally answer Sojourner Truth's question, ain't I a woman, with a resounding yes. When we leave here today, let's turn promise into, into partnerships. 
Let's turn partnerships into power. And we are here so that our daughters and ourselves and our granddaughters can be empowered to make decisions about our futures, our bodies, and our lives. Make no mistake, there is a war on choice, and we are going to win it. It's time to take women's rights off the bargaining table and put up a sign that says, not negotiable. We are here today with our daughters, with our mothers, with our husbands, with our boyfriends, with our sisters, with our lovers, and in solidarity with our sisters all over the world to tell you to keep your hands off our bodies. When one woman is enslaved by laws restricting freedom of choice, all are not free. Please join me in really a hand of applause for all the women of color who have been here today, who have been in the march. This, we are proud to be a part of the women of color contingent, the largest, largest mobilization in our history. We have behind us flags of 57 nations. People who have come here today, we are honored to have them on the platform with us. I just want to thank you and tell you that how proud I am to march with you, America, and recognize how wrong is the international policy of this administration. And I hope that you will be humble and brave enough to change it and make the right decision to liberate the world from Bush fundamentalism. Thank you very much. 87% of counties in the United States do not have a doctor that provides abortion services. That means one out of every three women live in a county with no abortion provider. There is a critical shortage of doctors and it is threatening to make what we know now as Roe versus Wade irrelevant. Viagra receives more required class time on average than either contraception or abortion. Viagra. Abortion is one of the most common medical procedures, yet medical students are not being trained to provide them. There's a whole generation out there standing with us who don't know what this is for. A couple of people said to me, why are you carrying a hanger? I said, because this is what life was like before choice. This was the choice. This was it. And I'm here to tell you never again. We are not going backwards, child, never again. Never again. You understand me, young women under 30? This is what we used. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again will this be the choice of any woman in our hemisphere, in our world. Never again.